All right, what's up, Dragon Boot? It looks like we're on day nine of previews now, and it looks like they just dropped what looks to be the majority of the stuff left over from the big score subset in Thunder Junction. And something about these cards, they've all been good, so I'm expecting today's to be just as powerful. That starts with Generous Plunderer. It's a colorless and a red for a 2-2. Menace, at the beginning of your upkeep, you may create a treasure token. When you do, target opponent creates a tapped treasure token. When this card attacks, it deals damage to defending player equal to the number of artifacts they control. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. There's so much going on with this card. First off, it's a rogue, so it fits the outlaw style deck. It's a 2-2 two, two for 2. It has menace, so it's going to be hard to block. It generates you a mana every turn, and we know there's a bunch of stuff in the set that already cares about treasure. It gives your opponent treasure, which is a bit of a downside, but... If they don't use it, then they take damage for each artifact. And it doesn't say just treasure for each artifact they control. So if they are playing one of these crazy decks with all the artifacts that we talked about in yesterday's video, which when you're done watching this, I'll link at the end so you can watch it. Like, this, this card's cool. I like the symmetry of it that you're both getting treasure. They just can't use theirs till next turn, but that's fine. I, I, there's a lot to like about this card. It's kind of crazy giving your opponent mana, but also ramping yourself. I don't know how that's going to work out in the end, but I'm at least willing to give it a go. <laughs> I started to say this name and couldn't help but laugh. Tarnation Vista. That's hilarious. It is a land. Uh, enters the battlefield, tapped, and you choose a color. You tap to add a mana of the chosen color, or you can pay one and tap it for each color among mono color permanents you control. Add one mana of that color. So this is kind of neat. I mean... I don't know what the desert... Well, this isn't even a desert. This is just a land, actually. My, I immediately thought it was a desert. It is not. So this is just a regular land. Comes into play, choose a color. Tap for a mana of the chosen color. Wow, I don't know what to do with this yet. Like, it's kind of cool because it only cares about monocolor permanent. So it has to be something where you want a green card, a red card, whatever. But this does help facilitate the ability to play that type of deck. I don't know what to do with this. Right now, I don't want to give it any high marks because i got to really figure out what's going on with this. Harvester of Misery. Three colorless black black for a 5-4 menace. So that's pretty cool. It's a spirit. When it enters the battlefield, the other creatures get minus two, minus two until end of turn. So it does get to kill off some small things. And you can pay a colorless and a black. You can discard this card. Target creature gets minus two, minus two until end of turn. This is actually a cool little bit of flexibility, right? You get to give something negative, so a one or two toughness thing you can kill, which is kind of cool. I don't think there's anything to complain about there. And then also, you could just have it as a big creature later that is a 5-4 menace creature that also can pick off a bunch of small things. This probably has room to be played. I think the problem this card's going to have is just what type of deck wants this, right? Because we already have a lot of good, great, if you want to say that, spot removal available so you don't really need the second half but we also live in a world where there's shieldred archfiend of the dross you know whatever like all these other good creatures that i don't know if this has a home yet but at some point i would not be surprised if i lose to this card hostile investigator three colorless and a black for a four three ogre rogue detective randomly a detective this is cool when this enters the battlefield target opponent discards a card when one or more players discard one or more cards, you investigate. This ability triggers only once each turn. So it's another card for discard decks. Now, when your opponent discards, you get a clue and you get to draw. So that's pretty sweet. And the discard decks really didn't have like a solid creature. You were kind of just playing stuff like Shieldred or whatever because it made sense. But this is doable. I don't know if it's like worth being a mythic rare or whatever, but it's fine. I mean, nothing to write home about, just solid. All right, this one I had to hunt down for a translation for, but it's called Sandstorm Retriever. Two colorless and a green. It's a human artificer, and it's a 1-1. One, one. When this card enters the battlefield, it creates a 3-3 three, three colorless golem artifact creature token. You can pay two and tap it, put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature token you control. Though they also gain trample until end of turn. So this one's kind of interesting, right? It's a 3-mana 1-1, one, one, but you do get a 3-3 three, three with it. And we do have a couple of things that already care about golems. We have a couple of cards now in standard that will be making 3-3 three, three golems. 
So these could be part of the same deck. However, anything that's a creature token, you could pay two and tap this to put a plus one, plus one on all those things. And they get trample, and this doesn't have to be used as a sorcery. So if you're willing to pay three mana for a one, one, this card's actually not bad. And you're not really paying for a one, one. You're paying three mana for a four, four, sort of, right? Four power, four toughness between two creatures. So yeah, this could actually get some play. Kind of a neat card, really. Next up, we have Lost Jite, similar to Umazawa's Jite, I'm assuming. It's one mana, and it costs one to equip. It's a legendary artifact equipment. Whenever this equipment deals combat damage, put a charge counter on Lost Jite, and then you can remove a counter. Looks like at any point at instant speed to untap a land, to have target creature not block, or put a plus one plus one on equipped creature. Yeah, this is just good. I mean, you know, if you even save up a couple of counters, get to untap some lands, ramp a little bit, that's cool. Uh, it doesn't say like once per turn. You know, if the creature gets through, you can make something unblocked and then you can remove the rest of the counters to pump it up two or three times. Yeah, just a solid piece of equipment, really. All right, this one here is Greedy Gamble. It's a four mana enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, you draw three cards gain six life, and create three 2-1 black bat creature tokens with flying. At the beginning of your end step, you discard a card, you lose two life, you sacrifice a creature. When this leaves the battlefield, you discard three cards, lose six life, and sacrifice three creatures. Wow! This card has a lot going on with it. Okay, so, first thing. You're getting a ton for four mana immediately, right? You're getting three cards, six life, three creatures that fly so that's pretty crazy if you're playing against like some let's say mono red aggro type deck whatever that can't even really remove enchantments this is a large amount of upside because now you're getting extra cards you need for later in the game you're getting six life which can make them hard for you to kill you and you're getting three blockers right that's pretty strong now during your end step you end up discarding a card you lose a life you sacrifice a creature so you kind of have to make use of those cards you got but this is kind of cool. I love the gamble of it because when you lose it, you lose all the stuff you got in the beginning, which basically means you're wiping out your board and discarding your hand. But I like the risk reward that's going on here. What am I going to do with it? I have no idea, but it's a sweet card design. Bristle Bud Farmer, two colorless green green for a 5-5 five, five plant druid. Okay, before I read anything else on this card, plants might be a real thing. But also, well, we'll talk more about this in a second, but let's finish the card. So this 5-5 five, five for 4 mana also has Trample. When it enters the battlefield, you create two food tokens, so that's a dumb amount of value now. And then when it attacks, you can sacrifice a food. If you do, you mill three cards and you put a permanent card from among those into your hand. Okay, this thing, <laughs> 4 mana 5-5, five, five, and you get two food. If you choose... You can go ahead and eat the food, sacrifice it to mill stuff and maybe put something in your hand, or you can just use the food later, which is fine, because you'll have mana to crack the food because you paid for this thing. What's even crazier now is think about this. Like, green can go, like, sizable... You can go, like, normal size creatures on one and two, and then just start playing monsters the rest of the way, right? You can play six sixes on three. You can play whatever, five and six power on four... You can definitely do it on five. Like, green is going to be a bunch of monsters, and they might, most of them might even have trample. Like, this is a wild card. Really cool, though. I don't know where it fits or what I'm doing with it, but yeah, this has potential for sure. All right, next up is Collector's Cage. Colorless and a white for an artifact. It has hideaway five. So you look at your top five cards, you put a card under it, and then when you meet the requirement, you can play it. In this case, you pay a colorless, tap it, put a plus one, plus one counter, and target creature you control. Then if you control three or more creatures with different powers, you may play the exiled card without paying its cost. Yeah, nothing wrong with this. I mean, I don't know if this gets a lot of room and play in standard, because we already have like the Ozolith and a bunch of creatures that already put plus one, plus ones on themselves or other things. But it's not a bad option to have. I will say for commander decks that want the redundancy of playing a plus one, plus one counter every turn... There's a few decks that want that. Like, this could be very good in that situation. And also a format where you might gamble on some more expensive cards to get for free that you wouldn't necessarily play in something like a 60-card format. 
And we have Molten Duplication, a colorless and a red for a sorcery. Create a token that's a copy of target artifact or creature you control, except it's an artifact in addition to its other types. It gains haste until end of turn, sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. Wow, create a token that's a copy of target artifact or creature you control, and it has haste. Like, this is strong. It's a two mana, one turn copy of an artifact or a creature. Somebody's definitely going to do something with this card. Like, I can't see this card not getting played. It, sure, it's sorcery speed and all that, but it's only two mana. And to be able to get, like, a second artifact, and also, you still have the option to sacrifice that for something, get an ability. I think we saw a card yesterday that if you sack an artifact, which just requires itself to sacrifice, you can then pay two mana and copy it or something. So, like, there's all kinds of things you could do with this card, even with just cards we've seen recently out of this set. So, like, this could be kind of cool. But overall, I have to say, the big score cards out of the set have been kind of crazy. And if you want to see some of the others, I'm going to go and link the video from yesterday because we covered the other pile of them. But these are definitely going to be showing up in a lot of your decks, or a lot of decks in your games, whether it's yours or your opponent's. So that's all I have you for now. We'll see you next time.